Hello there and welcome to my talk show. Okay, my name is Freddy and I'm going to be your host and you're going to be my guest. The tutor for this assignment is, uh, for the subject, sorry, is Licenciado Denis Antonio Ramos. And the assignment or the topic for this show, uh, talk show, is uh, sign language and gestures. We are going to start with gestures. Okay, according to the reading material, the test discusses the distinction between signs, gestures, and emblems in nonverbal communication. Signs are akin to speech and replace speaking, while gestures are used alongside speech to enhance communication. Examples of gestures are provided as follows. Emblems like thumbs up or shh. These are examples of nonverbal signals with fixed meanings and they don't rely on speech. They can vary culturally as seen with the letter B sign in British, which means victory or insult. Depending on this orientation, it's crucial to understand these differences to avoid cultural misunderstandings. Okay, we're going to continue with the next slide. Okay, we have here ties of sign languages. There are two main categories of sign languages, alternate sign languages and primary sign languages. The first one, alternate sign languages are systems of hand, of hand signals developed for limited communication in a specific context where speech is not possible. They are not considered full languages and are often used alongside a spoken language. Examples include sign languages, sign language used by monks during periods of silence and gestural communication among certain Aboriginal groups and bookmakers. The second primary sign languages, on the other hand, are the first languages of groups of people who do not use spoken language for communication. Examples include British Sign Language and French Sign Language used within deaf uh, communities in Britain and in France. It is important to know that primary sign languages are not mutually in, intangible and even though BSL and LFs, LSF are both primary sign languages, they have distinct signs. Additionally, American Sign Language is not the same as British Sign Language or LSF and has historical connection to LSF. In the following discussion, we focus will be in the ASL, which despite its status as a primary sign language, was not initially, initially recognized as a true language. Okay, we're going to continue with the next slide. Give me a second. We have here oralism. In the 1960s, ASL, American Sign Language, was finally recognized 
as a natural language. That was something important, right? Uh, thanks. This was thanks to the work of William uh, Stoke. Prior to this, many well meaning educators believed that using sign language by deaf children will hinder their ability to learn English. So a teaching method known as oralism dominated deaf, deaf education throughout most of the 20th century. Oralism requires students to focus on English speech sounds and lip reading skills. Despite its lack of success, success it went largely unchallenged, possibly due to a belief that most deaf, deaf children wouldn't achieve much, much educationally. However, during this time, ASL continued to thrive with many deaf children of hearing parents learning it at schools for the deaf from their peers rather than their teachers. Only a small percentage of deaf children have deaf parents who taught them sign language directly. As a result, American Sign Language was primarily transmitted from child to child. Okay, we're going to continue with the topic, which is something extensive. Okay, signed language. In recent years, significant changes have occurred in deaf education, education with a continued focus on teaching English in its written form rather than spoken to facilitate communication between the deaf and hearing communities Many institutions promote the use of signed English, also known as manually code English or MZE. Signed English in involves using signs that correspond to English words in English sentences, structures. This approach is particularly beneficial for hearing parents of deaf children as it offers a less challenging method of communication. Okay, we're going to continue with the origins of American Sign Language. American Sign Language did not originate as a gestured version of English, on the contrary to some claims. Instead, is its, its historical roots can be traced back to the French sign language used as in 18th century Paris school. In the early 19th century, Lauren Clerk, a teacher from this school, was brought to the United States by Thomas Gallaudet, an American minister who aimed to establish a school for deaf children, Claire not only taught deaf, deaf children, but also trained other teachers in sign language. Over time, this important French sign language evolved, incorporating elements from indigenous natural sign languages used by American deaf individuals, eventually becoming what we know as American Sign Language today. This unique history also explains why American Sign Language and British Sign Language users do not share a common sign language because they are both totally different. Okay, I'm going to present the last slide. Uh, American Sign Language as a natural language is a relative recent focus of linguistic studies, but, is, but exhibits all the key linguistic features found in spoken languages. American Sign Language includes phonological, morphological, 
and synthetic levels. Okay, guys, this was my presentation. I hope you, I hope you have enjoyed it. Have a nice and wonderful rest of the day. Goodbye.